I am Joe Verisco. Um, I'm the creative director of JRV Majesty Productions and the producer of Queer Ill and OK, a uh, performance series featuring queer artists uh, forming new narratives about uh, being queer and living with HIV and other forms of chronic and mental illness. Hi there, my name is Cruel Valentine and I'm an international burlesque performer, producer, and educator. So this, this turnaround um, for the second edition uh, was kind of with the idea that I wanted to have it be an annual series. Um, and there was a couple of factors that I really wanted to um, keep in mind, uh, one of which was making sure that I was highly representative of different uh, communities uh, and different identities. Uh, with different backgrounds and experiences, uh, representing as many different uh, forms of chronic illness as possible, especially considering invisible illnesses. So I, I had done the show uh, about a year ago at Lynx Hall as uh, kind of a pilot uh, experiment with a production um, called Pony's Cabaret. Um, and it's uh, and it was a part of a process for me after being diagnosed with HIV uh, to discover uh, what you know what were some new narratives that were going on. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I was looking at uh, was kind of following patterns that I had seen in the past uh, about the kind of height of the epidemic in the 70s and the 80s, um, and narratives that also often followed like white gay men in New York City or San Francisco. So uh, I knew that my experience was different than that and I knew men had talked with community members and friends that had very different experiences and so I was interested in discovering what that meant and, uh, and opening it up to a lot of other illnesses as well and finding out kind of what the intersections were. Queer is sort of, I don't, I don't want to say all encompassing because there are people who don't like to identify that way, but mm -hmm. it's a, I think it's a good umbrella term that a lot of people identify strongly with. Because um, it's a way of saying that you're different and maybe that's weird to some people, um, but it's a way of taking that, that word back and having it be less about weird and just like, hey, I'm different and I have something to offer. I think mm -hmm. that's a really strong thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a couple of thoughts on that and I think that's, uh, I totally agree with Cruel as far as the that term queer being an umbrella term, um, and and it is very different for a lot of uh, different people. Uh, you know, generationally, that it's very different. I think for different communities, that that term is really loaded. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things that I would say is that you know, language is very sensitive and is always changing. And so, people's right to self determine what how they want to identify is really important. So if they say you know one thing versus another. You probably should go with whatever they want to have, you know, be called, whatever, if that's a pronoun use or if that's um, an identifier based on gender or sexuality um, or outside of that. Um, at, at, I, I remember having uh, one person approach me uh, to dis uh, about the use of queer. Um, obviously, the show is called Queer, Ill, and OK. Um, so that term can mean a lot of different things, and they were asking and questioning, you know, well, how do I fit into that? Or I'm not sure if I fit into that. I don't necessarily personally identify with that term or haven't applied that term to myself before. Uh, you know, how do you define it? And so I, I kind of went through what my definitions were um, and, uh, and, and there was this question of whether or not we should try and all be on the same page with what queer means. But I felt that that was very counterintuitive, that the idea behind queer is that exactly, we're not all on the same page mm -hmm. about what that means. And that's kind of one of the wonderful things about it is that a lot of different people from a lot of different dynamics can uh, fit into this realm. Um, and it doesn't have to be just based on your gender or sexuality, mm -hmm. power dynamics, history, you know, uh, your experiences and lifestyle, uh, your business practices, like their politics, of course, there are a lot of different things that would, I think, uh, fit into this realm for me as being what uh, queer can and, and encompass. It's hard to look into a group that you were not a part of from the outside and see things as dynamic and and as diversely as you do in your own communities. When you see another group of people that you don't identify with and you don't have much contact with, until you do, it's very hard to, to understand them as individuals with their own quirks and opinions and thoughts on things. speak to is HIV specifically and I think that um, one of the common 
with some of the misconceptions that happen on a general scale, both within and outside of the community, is that there is a lack of education. Um, there's a lack of update in ed education around what it means to live with HIV today. And I, that's part of the show, that's part of some of the other work that I do, um, you know, and, and even for myself. And, and that's kind of how it started as I was diagnosed and I had so many questions and was very scared um, and very uncertain. And speaking with my doctor, I remember asking, I, I had a cold during my very first visit, and I was asking, you know, can I take cold medicine or is that gonna, you know, cause some problems? Like, what can I, what do I do? And, you know, she just kind of uh, rolled her eyes and said, drink some fluids, eat some chicken soup, and lay in your bed and rest, and it's, you're gonna be fine. Like, it's, it's okay. So it was, it, you know, and, and that was, it's okay, it's okay. That was constantly said, to me, and so that was something that I really wanted to, th that I had to think about, you know, okay, well, um, how much longer do people live while taking regular medication? Mm -hmm. Finding out about terms like um, uh, being undetectable, um, finding out, you know, what the different measurements were for your illness, uh, you know, as far as um, your viral load and your, what used to be called T cell count, but is CD4 now, um, just more specific, more accurate information. Um, more forms of prevention awareness, uh, things like PEP and PrEP, which, you know, uh, are, are huge and are kind of entering some more mainstream conversations about ways in which we can engage with one another's body in a su in sexually in a safe and healthy way. Mm -hmm. People can still get very, very sick and um, and it's a still a very serious illness uh, and something that has not been cured. People live with for their entire lives. But it does not mean that you are limited uh, by as many things as you used to be. I mean, the differences today are exponentially different than they were 10 years ago, uh, you know, even five years ago. <clears throat> Women, trans populations, sex workers, people of color, like these are populations that are not really highly represented and discussed when we're focusing in, uh, on HIV. So I think that that's one of the common misconceptions and I think how that flows through uh, education standards, uh, through politics, through policy making is a slow process. Most things is kind of confronting and accepting that this is a part of your identity but not necessarily all of your identity and it doesn't make you any less or any better um, than anybody else. Um, and how you choose to interact with that illness is, uh, is important um, and you should feel empowered by that. Anytime you reach out your hand to somebody who's struggling and try to help them through something or provide them with, you know, even a list of resources or a hug or a kind word, I think makes you an advocate for them and I think you can be a very good advocate for yourself as well. One of the best things that you can do when facing an illness, uh, a chronic illness of any kind, is to talk about it, to find a space in which you feel comfortable, safe, uh, and hopefully empowered to talk about it. Um, whether or not that's, you know, has to be something that you're going to share publicly or if it's going to be, you know, more discreet, that's absolutely okay and should be determined by the individual. Um, but I really think that engaging with another person is good. And then, of course, engaging with the self is really good and reflecting on how you are feeling on a daily basis, checking in with yourself, taking care of yourself. In the little things you do every day, you can be an activist, you can be an advocate for someone standing up for your own rights and your own happiness, your own freedom, even in very small ways, is a way of being an activist. To all my sporks, you are unique and you are beautiful. Good night, my lovelies.